Computer systems are a delicate balancing act between four key pillars, compute, memory, storage, and networking. When these components evolve, innovations in one area open bottlenecks in another area. In the early 2000s, hard disk drives were the major enterprise storage media. Hello, I'm Rishikesh Sathone. As a Director of Product Planning at Samsung, I'm responsible for driving growth around Samsung storage products by partnering with the innovation ecosystem in and around Silicon Valley. I'm excited to walk you through how storage interfaces evolved over the last decade and some of the bleeding edge technology that we are currently working on. Computer systems are a delicate balancing act between four key pillars, compute, memory, storage, and networking. When these components evolve, innovations in one area open bottlenecks in another area. In the early 2000s, hard disk drives were the major enterprise storage media. Flash storage technology turned out to be such a disruptive technology because it was orders of magnitude faster than hard drives and suddenly created new bottlenecks at the system level. The industry responded in multiple waves to unlock the performance of flash memory. After two waves of innovation that removed protocol-related bottlenecks at the system level, we are on the cusp of third innovation at this time to remove the final bottleneck that will unleash all the flash performance to the system. Let's explore this story summarized in this graph. Up until 2010, hard drives were the de facto storage devices and offered data at speeds much faster than the older tape drives. Attaching hard drives to the CPU's PCI bus via HBA and SAS expander was the fastest way to access this non-volatile storage. A single hard disk drive did not saturate the bus. However, 24 of them together resulted in a good balance. When you hit a capacity limit on this direct attached storage, you could go over the network and access bigger pool of storage with a little hit to the performance, but all within the same order of magnitude. Flash had already disrupted the consumer market. When it came to the enterprise space in 2013, it immediately offered a great value proposition to replace 15K and 10K hard drives. A single solid state drive now could saturate the SATA SAS bandwidth. SSDs offered much higher random performance, or as it calls IOPS, compared to the hard drives. So all the IOPS sensitive workload immediately moved to the SATA and SAS based SSDs. Let's get more scoop on this area from my colleague, Pankaj. Hello, I am Pankaj Kalra, Senior Product Planning Manager at Samsung Semiconductor. As the leading provider of SaaS storage, Samsung offers the most advanced and reliable enterprise solutions for over a decade. As an industry standard, SaaS has proven to be a trusted and sustainable interface for demanding mission critical enterprise workloads due to its high performance, high reliability, scalability, and flexibility. In addition, the SaaS ecosystem is well established and offers a wide range of intercompatible HPAs, RAID adapters, expanders, connectors, and system backplanes. As demand for storage performance continues to rise, SaaS has also kept pace by transitioning from the original 3 Gbps to 12 Gbps over time and to the latest generation 24 gig SaaS. 24 gig SaaS doubles the data throughput of its predecessor, offers improved reliability, and is backward compatible with legacy infrastructure. And I'm pleased to share our latest innovation, the PM1653 SaaS Enterprise SSD. The PM1653 is the industry's highest performing 24 gig SaaS SSD. It is also the first 24 gig SaaS SSD made with the sixth generation of VNAND, enabling storage capacities from 800 gigabyte to 30.72 terabyte. The PM1653 uses our native Rhino controller with a dual port in a 2.5 inch form factor, enabling the drive to easily plug into existing enterprise systems. It offers the industry's highest random read speed of over 700K IOPS, a key metric for server storage performance. With this drive, a sequential read speed of up to 4,300 megabyte per second is possible, which is the maximum speed for the 24 gig SaaS interface. The PM1653 is capable of supporting the legacy 12 gig SaaS platforms as well and it's ready today for enterprises and OEMs that are updating their SaaS infrastructure to increase data throughput. In addition to data throughput, 
enterprise storage systems are continually challenged to provide reliable data protection. Data protection is vital to business continuity and data availability. RAID is among the most popular means of achieving this type of data protection, with RAID 5 being one of the most cost-effective solutions. However, its performance has historically been limited by the extra I.O. operation required to implement the RAID 5 algorithm. To overcome this limitation, Samsung has worked closely with Broadcom to demonstrate the superior RAID 5 performance. With the combination of Samsung's PM1653 SSD with Broadcom's 9600 mega RAID product family. The PM1653 achieves the random read and random write performance required to take full advantage of Broadcom's 9600 series. And this pairing delivers over 1 million RAID 5 random write IOPS, which is 5 times more than the corresponding 12 gig SAS solution. This resulting improvement in performance could directly enhance the user experience for online transactional workloads such as Microsoft SQL. And with that, I would like to invite our friend Rick Katsipal, product planner from .com, to share their views on 24 gig SaaS. This is an excellent example of the innovations by Broadcom and Samsung around 24 gig SaaS, delivering solutions to our customers that address real world problems. 24 gig SaaS is in a unique position to provide highly reliable, scalable storage infrastructure on which Broadcom and Samsung can address specific performance challenges. Broadcom, with our 9600 family of RAID products, will be removing some of these fundamental barriers presented by parity data protection, increasing RAID 5 random write IOPS from less than 200,000 in 12 gig SAS to over 1 million in 24 gig SAS. We have also improved rebuild times by more than 10x and lowered write latency by a factor of 60. Collaboration efforts such as these continue to strengthen the SaaS ecosystem, of which Broadcom is proud to be a part of. Those are amazing achievements on the SaaS front, Pankaj and Rick. Well, while the industry continues to make progress on SaaS, the interface has fundamental limitations. It was designed for hard drives, and there's only so much it can do. That's why Post-2010, the industry started working simultaneously on removing the HBA and SATA SAS interface and connecting SSDs directly to the processor with PCIe by standardizing the PCIe and VME interface. The result has been great direct attach performance. There is nothing between the processor and the SSD. While this is awesome, there's only so many SSDs that can be directly attached to a CPU. CPU vendors have been adding a lot of PCI lanes to support more SSDs and hence more capacity. PCI is doubling its bandwidth from Gen 3 to Gen 4 to Gen 5, and Gen 6 is already under planning. But the data to analyze is growing faster than our ability to add direct attach capacity. Most of the data is remote and on a different system or even a different rack. Moving this data itself is a lot of cost, hence, the bottleneck has now shifted to network. To address this remote storage bottleneck, the network itself has beefed up going from 10 or 20 GBE to 200 GBE. And NVMe has extended its reach to support other Fabrics interfaces besides the PCIe with the standardization of NVMe OF or NVMe over Fabrics. This will greatly help the network latency and bandwidth. We are beginning to use these NVMe OF systems right now. Even at PCI Gen 3, the aggregate bandwidth of SSDs is much higher than the 200 GBE that comes out of the box. Hence, the main bottleneck at this time is CPU and its roots complex inside the system. Samsung is developing Ethernet SSDs that is working closely with the eBOF or Ethernet Bunch of Flash architecture that removes this bottleneck and unleashes all of the SSD performance to the wider network. Brad, tell us about the eBOF and why is it important? Hi, my name is Brad Rieger, Principal Architect at Ingraces Technology USA. New machine learning applications demand new storage architectures. The Ingraces eBOF with eSSDs replaces the NIC, CPU, and bounce buffer in legacy storage with a simple Ethernet switch to unlock full parallel access to all SSDs in the enclosure. We're excited to be working with Samsung to demonstrate the superior performance of our Ingraces eBOF with Samsung's eSSDs, 
compared to legacy NVMe over fabric JBOFs. Thank you, Brad. And thanks to him, we have one of these Foxconn's EBOF in our labs. And yes, our engineers are working hard with this early engineering samples of Ethernet SSDs. Hear this, even without a fully loaded system, Samsung ESSDs and EBOF have crashed the 200 GB E bar set by the PCIe-based JBOFs, and we are still playing with an unoptimized engineering samples. There is so much room to improve, ranging from EBOF setup to ASIC level optimizations. This is amazing. I'm so looking forward to the similar feats on random performance while lowering the latency numbers. There's less hardware for the signals to go through, so the lower latency numbers are pretty much expected. We have been working closely with NetApp to enable ONTAP with EBOF. While full compatibility with ONTAP will take some time, we have made tremendous progress already in a very short time. While all of this is technically wonderful, let's explore some real-life applications. The eSSDs have three main value propositions over PCI SSDs. First, the eBOF architecture itself unlocks all of that SSD performance to the network. Second, it reduces overall system level TCO. And third, which is very important, the inherent flexibility of Ethernet fabric makes disaggregation and composability easier and practical to implement in a multi-rack system of a hyperscaler environment. This opens up a lot of new applications. Let's focus on four important ones. The first two on the left here in the slide focuses on OEMs. They are able to offer systems that can scale up and scale out. Let's hear from one of our friends at NetApp. Hi, everybody. My name is Chris Liu, and I'm a tech marketing engineer with NetApp. And I focus on the hardware that ONTAP runs on top of. NetApp is excited about the potential of next generation NVMe over fabric designs enabled by Ethernet SSDs. This EBOF architecture, which would allow economic scale up to compete with SAS, while also fueling the growth of large scale out disaggregated, composable storage architectures. We're in the early exploration stage with Samsung right now, conducting a proof of concept to prove out this promising technology. Thank you. So NetApp gave us an amazing overview of the first two applications. Now let's talk about the remaining two applications, which are here on the left. With eSSDs, compute and storage become like a Lego blocks. This opens up two applications for the big data centers. Number one, composable systems. What that really means is that for any given application, we no longer have to pre-build a system with just the right amount of compute to storage ratio. Different applications have different optimal compute to storage ratios. So when a system is built for application one, it's not necessarily optimal for application two. For hyperscale customers, they have no control over applications which will run on their systems. So they just build systems that have a generic ratio. So practically, almost all application run on a system with a suboptimal ratio. Now, all of this becomes a non-issue because with Ethernet SSDs, that ideal system ratio can be built on demand for any application. And better yet, the ratio can be scaled up and down as desired as the application needs evolve. The second application is disaggregation. What that really means is that compute and storage no longer need to be physically in the same rack. Hyperscale customers scale up with multiple racks at a time. So for them, the disaggregated nature of EBOF architecture means that the upgrade cycles of CPU and storage are no longer interconnected. Compute and storage from different generations can coexist together. Just because your compute might need an upgrade, it doesn't mean that you are forced to upgrade your storage too. The Ethernet fabric makes it inherently easier to implement a multi-cloud solution and opens up many other possibilities. Let's hear from our friend Rob at NVIDIA. My name is Rob Davis. I am the VP of Storage Technology at NVIDIA Networking. I came to NVIDIA through the Mellanox acquisition, which is a perfect proof point that high-speed networks are very important to GPUs. 
We have been working with Samsung on ways to leverage our high-speed networks with their storage technology and GPUs for some time. But 200 and soon 400 gigabit network speeds are only half of what is needed to optimize storage networking performance. You also need faster protocols like RDMA to go with the higher bandwidth. RDMA is the remote version of DMA, direct memory access. This is a hardware-driven transfer of data from memory to memory within a computer system. RDMA is a hardware-driven memory to memory transfer across a network performed by the hardware in the InfiniBand or Ethernet adapters on both ends. Instead of the network transport layer being in software, like with traditional TCP protocol, with RDMA, it is in hardware on the network adapters. Faster wire speeds and RDMA are essential to storage networking for data intensive GPU applications. Thank you, Rob. I'm sure you gave our audience a surprise with that fifth AIML application. And I can tell you that there are many more exciting possibilities with this new architecture. Samsung is working on all fronts of innovation, whether it is to help our customer get the most out of our legacy systems like SaaS or high growth PCI systems or the cutting edge ethernet SSDs. Samsung partners with a broad ecosystem of partners to help drive innovation. Talk to us. Tell me what you find interesting. We want to work with you, innovate together, and bring value to our customers together. Thank you.